Hi, Andy Brocklehurst here with another software product magic tutorial stroke demonstration. And here I'm going to show you a press release writer which I've put together. And this all started with this file. This was a press release uh, template that I found online. It, it was in probably with some PLR or some resale rights or something. And it was like a fill in the blanks press release. It just sort of gave you the outline. So I thought, well, what an ideal thing. It's already a fill in the blanks thing. So just where those blanks go, if we put tags in for the software product magic to fill out, uh, we can turn this into a piece of software. So this is what I did to the text file. So in the original document it had for immediate release and then it had instructions. So it had in brackets, it had put the name of your contact person here, put the, your company name here and so on. But all I've done is go through and change those into tags uh, with the square bracket hash tag name hash square bracket, that's the format that tags in software product magic use. And all of these tags will be found by the software and then we can ask questions and replace them. But I didn't want to leave it just as a text file. So I've also created an HTML file as well. And it's the HTML is an exact copy, but it's just Obviously with HTML we can put some formatting in so I can put bold here and I can bold underline the headline and so on. So I can just lay it out and make it look a little bit better. So we give people two options now. When the software does this it's going to generate both the, stand, the plain text format which is ideal if they need to upload it to a press release submission service or they can have the HTML version which is more suited to printing out and faxing off. So. That's my two documents. Now let's look at what we've done inside the software. So I've called it Press Release Writer, given it a description which will appear on the splash screen because I've told it to show the splash screen at startup. And for the about URL, I've just used softwareproductmagic.com. Obviously, if I created a domain or a web page for this software, then I would link to that. Uh, template folder, that's where those two files can be found. And down here in extensions, the default ones cover what I'm editing here. The two files I've got are a text file and an HTML file. So both of those are already covered in that list. I could put a help URL in here as well if I want to. I'm not going to for now. So then we, I went in here and I hit the scan for tags button and it found all of these and I think I had to change the order of some of them uh, because it the way it found them wasn't quite in the order that I wanted them to appear in. Uh, it was mostly right because it scans from top to bottom but there were one or two things it made more sense just to rearrange and ask in a different position. So if you end up with tags out of order you just click on them and you can move them up or down and whatever order they appear here is the order that they get processed in. Okay, let me just jump back to tag number one. So the first tag, contact person. I want to ask a question. It's a standard text entry. It's not an optional question. They have to put a contact name in. And so in question, I tell them to enter the first and last name of your contact. And then in the explanation, I just expand on that slightly. Company name, again, these are fairly self-explanatory, so I'm going to skip through some of these fairly rapidly. Put their company name in, the city where their company is based. And all of these are just standard text questions, so it's going to ask it with a standard text entry box. State or province, enter your state, province or county here. Now, if you were only building this for the US market, then you could have changed that to a list of answers question. And then in here, you could have put in a list of comma delimited US states. Uh, it would have been quite a long list, but you could have done that. You could have put, and you would have done it sort of as words and so on, comma, next one. Because I want this to work internationally, 
uh, then it might be that they can put in a province or a county name depending on where in the world they are. So I've just done it as a text entry box. Telephone number, fax number, and uh, you might want to make something like the fax number optional because not everyone has a fax machine. Email address for them to contact you if they've got any qu questions or want to ask you more about what's in your press release. Your web address. And here, um, enter your web address including the HTTP colon slash slash. And so I've put that in the default answer. So when the software runs, it will create a, a text entry box like that, and it should put the cursor at the end of the default thing that's entered. So it'll have that in there for them. So they can just start typing from the, type the remainder of their web address in. Okay, today's date is going to be taken from a system value of the date in short form. Uh, I'm working the, the software can generate today's date, so there's no point in me asking what is today's date and making them type it in uh, when the computer already knows it. The release date, this will be the release date of the press release. Now note, this is normally today's date. So I've put that tag of uh, with today's date, we've shoved in there as the default answer to the release date question. So remember, in default answers, you can put straight text. You can also use any tag that you have previously defined. So by that, any tag that comes before this one. I couldn't, for example, in that box there, refer to the headline because the headline comes after the release date option. So it hasn't yet got the headline to put in there. All tags are processed sequentially. OK, what is the headline? Then uh, what's the opening paragraph and an explanation of what they need to put in there. And I took all of this from the original template, uh, which told, said, you know, here you should type this. Literally just copied and pasted into here and took it out from the template where I replaced it with my tag. Second paragraph tells them what they need to put in that and how the third paragraph and fourth one are constructed. You'll notice that the uh, the fourth, the, the final paragraph, the fourth one is optional. So I've made it optional. If they don't have anything else to say, they can leave it blank. Uh, summary, which recaps everything. And then they are, they're asked to give a little bit about their company history. That's it. Now, when this runs, uh, I am, because I want to let them possibly open up the plain text file, I am going to ask them where they want to save it and have it automatically open that folder when the software is complete. But I'm also going to display the press release HTML version of the file in the software when it's finished running. I've enabled the save and load feature. So if someone's doing a press release and they get halfway through and they need to stop or, uh, or maybe they want to be able to save it so they can come back and edit it later on, uh, the save load feature is turned on and it will save any files from within the software with a file extension of PRW for press release writer. Background image, I just found a suitable image to use, selected it, and I've made my finish button label generate release. So when they finish the very last thing, it'll have a little button that says next until they get to the very last one, and then the button will tell them generate release, and when they click that, it will run, process the press release and generate it. Let's build the software and then we can run it and take a look at it. Okay, open up the location. So there's all of our files. If I was distributing this, I would distribute all of the files. Uh, sometimes you won't have uh, the BGR file. Not all programs have that. Uh, basically, if the program contains images, then it will have that file there. So let's fire up our press release writer and see it in action. So there's my little startup. You see there's that background image I selected. And so instructions, enter the first and last name of your contact. So I'll make that me, uh, my, soft, my company name. 
Incidentally, I'm, I'm clicking the next button here. The page up and page down keys on the keyboard do the same thing. Uh, page up goes previous, page down goes next. Uh, just a useful shortcut when you're entering uh, data because you're putting in text all the time. You probably don't want to keep reaching for the mouse. So I might do that. Page down. Um, oops. My phone number, just put anything in there for now, just to demonstrate this real quick. You notice the default of the HTTP went in there. Release date, defaulted to today's date. The headline, see I'm not gonna write a proper pre press release here, so opening paragraph. Second paragraph. Third one. We can skip the fourth, that was optional. Summary. Company history. Uh, and you'll notice the button because that's the last question has changed to generate release, which is what we gave as our label. Hit the button, where do I want to create the files? And there we go. So, and it, you'll notice that it opens up, you can ignore those, I've used a testing folder that had some files in it already. It would have normally opened up like that with just the two files, press release.txt and the HTML file. I can open the text one if I want to and see it in a plain text format. Uh, of course, the software itself has opened up the HTML version, which looks better. So there's another example application built using software product magic, the easiest and quickest way to rapidly build profit-making software.